Tanisha Smith, and I'm here to present my demonstration speech. Today, we'll be talking about working out the abdominals. Many times, people want that abdominal, straight, washboard stomach. Men, you know, they want the six pack, some women as well. However, what they don't realize is in order to obtain that, you have to go through a good diet, nutrition, as well as complete different abdominal exercises. Many times people target cardio or, you know, strength. That is good, however, that does not target the area that you're looking for when you're talking about your abdominals. Some of these exercises can be difficult and strenuous. However, you do have to realize each area of your body has its own type of exercises that targets that. And here you realize with the abdominal, there are two areas that you need to target, your upper core and your lower core. Here's the agenda for today. We will talk about the required items, things you need while you're working out, warm-ups you need, as well as the actual execution of upper and lower body workouts. The first item, or the first thing on the agenda was to talk about the required items. The things you actually need as you're, before you try to complete any of these exercises. The first thing would be gym clothes and running shoes. Here you see I have my running shoes. Um, I have a Nike type of um, Air Max. With my running shoes I have a, for me I am flat footed. So when I pick my running shoes I make sure that it is most comfortable to my arm. However, when completing abdominal workouts, along with the, couple, the um, type of foot you have, you need to make sure that shoe has a good heel and toe support because many of the abdominal workouts that we complete have you to extend the heel or toe. So make sure your shoe is comfortable in those two areas. Next, we'll talk about the type of clothing, gym clothing. You know, make sure that your clothes are not too tight or not too loose. You know, when your clothes are too tight, whether it be the shirt or the pants, they'll stick to you. So when you're sweating, you just have those items that stick to you. Then if it's too loose, you might have to deal with, you know, extra, which could really create a workout issue by the pants being too long or the shirt being too big. Now, to, before we begin, before you begin the workouts, you have to begin with the warm-ups. With the warm-ups, you need arm stretches, leg stretches, neck stretches, and back stretches. Here you see me completing neck, I mean leg, back, and arm stretches. Everything is fully extended. Make sure when you're completing these um, warm-ups, you realize that warm-ups are to get the blood flowing, get those muscles loosened. Everything is beginning to regulate. You are preparing your body for the exercises. So make sure as you are completing these warm-ups, you realize that everything you're doing is to get you to the next step in a way that does not cause difficulty or strain on your body. Now again, I told you that I have the neck, leg, and back, I mean back, leg, and arm stretches all in one. However, the one that is not shown here is the neck stretches, and it's kind of simple. You're just rotating your neck or doing neck circles, doing things to loosen up those neck bones because many of the abdominal workouts completed deal with your neck and you don't want to cause cramps. So make sure you do exercises that kind of get that neck loosened as well. Now to go into the workout. Here we have the upper dog. The upper dog is a great abdominal workout. It works out that lower core but it gives your body the tension it needs to pull those muscles to get you the results you want. Now the steps you go through, or the thing that I say is, first you make sure you have spacious floor area. Make sure your floor area is enough, huge enough, to realize that I have a workout to complete, it may cause movement, it may cause me to have to extend my body. So make sure that the area around you is good enough that you can complete the actual exercise without any, you know, tightness or claustrophobia. All right, next, after you make sure your area is good, you can start to execute the actual exercise. You're laying prostrate on the floor. Get on your belly and lay down. Arms stretched out, making sure you're in the proper position. Then you will move on to aligning your body in the proper position for the actual exercise. 
After you're laying prostrate, you need to make sure both shoulders as well as palms are under your body. So here I have my elbows in, my palms are literally maybe in a 90 degree angle with my shoulders straight down. I'm still laying on the floor. At this point, your elbows are normally out. So my palms are still under my shoulders and my elbows are out. Now, as I begin to execute through this or push through, I am going to fully extend my hands upward. As I'm literally pushing my hands upward, I am raising my front body as well. My lower body is horizontal with the floor. So here, you'll see my front of the body is pushing. That's called the upward, upward dog, hence, upward pushing up toward the ceiling while my lower body is still horizontal with the floor. And that, again, is the upward dog. Now, for the last one, we have the torso twist, which is a favorite, but it targets that upper core. With this, you're sitting in an upright position, making sure your body is literally loose. It's almost a 90 degree angle. As you're sitting in that 90 degree angle, you will begin to get your body into the torso position. You will move your knees to a 45 degree angle, bending them slightly, then you will push your back up to almost a 45 degree angle with the floor. So here you see me bend. After you're in that uh, position, you'll take your arms and collapse them in front of your stomach. Then you are ready to execute the activity. Literally, you begin to twist, hence the name torso twist, rotating your arms from left to right. And it will literally be opposites. So as I'm rotating to the left, I will feel my right knee come up. And as I'm rotating to the right, I will put my left knee. And you can do this activity for about 10 to 15 times to complete a full set. And that again is the torso twist. In conclusion, I say warm ups are the best. Go back to warming up again, or not necessarily warming up, it's kind of warming yourself down. Those same exercises done at the beginning can be done at the end to relax those muscles again. Because when you were completing the exercise, you were causing tension in those muscles. So if you go back to those stretches again, slowly executing them, breathing through, remember to breathe through each of these exercises, you will realize that your muscles are relaxed and that you have completed your exercises at a great pace as well as without injury. So again, I am Tanisha Smith and that is my demonstration.